folks, welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm home in Orange County, New York, and you're probably saying, where have I been? Where's the videos? It's been a while. Well, I haven't posted a video in about a month now, and I still have nothing in the hopper uh, to edit, even. Uh, I haven't been really flying at all in the last month or so. Uh, a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is, uh, one of the biggest reasons is that there's snowing. It's been snowing forever here in, in New York. Uh, and I haven't seen as much snow in many, many years. Uh, so we've gotten over three feet of snow with the last back-to-back -back storms that we've had. So as you can imagine, it's tough to fly. You gotta plow the runways and the taxiways and uh, the Orange County Airport does a very good job of doing that. They have a crew there, a uh, full-time crew there doing all that fun stuff. Um, but the other smaller airports I fly to typically doesn't, they don't get to it right away. So it's a challenge. Um, the second biggest reason is because I finally pulled the trigger uh, on getting my instrument. So I know I always tell you guys, hey, if you're interested in GA flying, pull the trigger. It's an awesome experience. Have fun with it. Well, I finally looked in the mirror and said, I got to pull the trigger on my instrument training, which I did. Uh, I started my instrument training in January, um, and uh, it's February, I think, 5th right now. Um, so I've gotten it written out of the way. So I took a long, I took about four hours a day after work to study for the written. Um, it's not a easy uh, test. Uh, you got to have information. You got to know a couple of things. You got to know actually a bunch of things. And you had to know formulas. And we can go over that in a few minutes here. But um, so that's probably the reason, reason why I haven't posted anything. I haven't got a chance. And I really want to study, you know, uh, and get this written out of the way. I did the King's course, which is a great course uh, to do online. So about four hours a night or so, I would study and about an hour in the morning, typically. So maybe maybe an average of four hours a day I've been studying and took a day off just to get my brain to refresh. Um, and I also did that. And I also did a course in Morristown, uh, American Flyers. They have a three-day course, uh, about 10 hours a day. I think the last, it's, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday course. And the Sunday course is about eight hours. But Friday is about 10, Saturday is about 10, and Friday is about eight hours. And they let you take the test if you choose to on Sunday. I was lucky enough that I studied the King's course all month, and this, and this course happened to be the last weekend of January. So I decided to, well, let me take that just so I can get a refresher. I'll take the test on Sunday, and hopefully I pass. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's not an easy test. It's one of, it's probably the hardest test you can take in aviation besides the airliner stuff you probably have to take. Um, but for GA stuff, and probably, well, well, airliners got to go through the same, you know, uh, pilots have to go through the same course as we do initially. Um, so it is probably the hardest test you can take written-wise. So, yeah, so I did all that fun stuff. And the, the Morristown course from American Flyers in New Jersey, awesome course, great instructors. They, they go over to some questions. They go over the gist of what's to experience. They go over what to expect in the test. They go over what to expect in the air. So it's not just going over the test questions. It's also including going over what things mean and you just can't go over test questions you need to understand what you're getting yourselves involved in uh, when you're an IMC so you don't want to just study for test questions and test questions and test questions you want to know what those questions mean and what they actually do um, so did all that I'm happy to say I did pass the written um, on that Sunday morning uh, actually Sunday afternoon and it was well overwhelming. There's a lot of stress, as you can imagine. So the month of studying and knowing I got to get this written, and I'm a bad test taker. Uh, it, so that's why I really, again, second reason why I didn't post anything. But American Flyers in Morristown, New Jersey, if you're looking to your instrument or your private, or even I think they have commercial courses too, uh, I would recommend that you do some training with King Schools. You, uh, there's also... Um, um, with the other one, Shepherd Air is out there. That's another good course, but Shepherd Air is, is a great course. Uh, it, it tells you what the questions and the answers are be on the test, and but you should have another course to understand what the question actually means and not just guess and try to figure out the answer. Uh, so that's what I would recommend doing is do Shepherd Air if you like. Also uh, do a ground schooling or even Kings so you understand what the questions mean and you will pass the test for sure. Uh, so that's the next challenge. So I'm going to be bringing, I have about 10 hours now ish with a safety pilot for the, now that, that on the, on the hands-on part of the test. And, uh, we, with an instructor the last 20 hours 
and then I'll do my check ride and hopefully I'll bring um, IFR and, and filing IFR and being in IFR conditions to the channel. I know there's a bunch of people out there that uh, do IFR flighting their channel, but I think it'd be pretty cool to finally bring this into our channel and uh, experience some more stuff and I can you know, show you guys uh, you know, on a lower level scale. Remember, I'm the little guy on how all that stuff works, nice and easy and slow. Any questions, you can know that, guys. I always answer your questions. So that's where I've been. So the, the questions on the test, straightforward questions, folks. It's 60 questions. Um, I thought it was actually 100. It's 60 questions. So I think you can get about 17 wrong. Um, so you really need to pay attention. But a lot of the questions on the test, they give you a chart, whether it's approach plate charts, whether it's departure, um, you know, airway questions, you're on this airway between these two VORs, which are DME from a VOR and such and so on and so forth, what's your minimum altitude uh, that you can go on that, on that uh, airway. So it, if the question brings you to the answer, if you follow the question on the chart, it's all right there in front of you. A couple of things you got to calculate with a formula, um, with departure, uh, feet per minute, and so on and so forth. That's what the ground schooling comes into play. They teach you how to do those questions and how to answer those questions and understand those questions. Uh, but you get a lot of those questions. And um, just take your time and get through the question and follow the question. You can mark questions. I marked about six or seven questions that I didn't know whatsoever. And that was a lot for me to mark seven questions not knowing what the heck they even meant. So because if I got a couple more wrong that I kind of knew the answer and guessed on it, I could have failed the test. Uh, and... 99% of the time, you get three answers, okay? And you can take one answer right off the bat that doesn't even make any sense. Like, it doesn't even belong in the aviation question. It's so bad. So it almost brings you down to a 50-50 shot if you don't know the answer, because uh, it's three questions. So you take that in consideration as well. I also, uh, there was two answers that I answered wrong, and... Um, I went, how I found the right answers were in the questions in the previous, uh, I'm sorry, in the, uh, the, the, the questions that were, you know, in, in front of me, but I think it was a 52, number 52 and I think number 48. Those two questions that I got on the written, I answered two questions I've gotten wrong in the lower numbers. So that was pretty cool to know, hey, I got this, I got this answer of a question that I marked, that w which I marked wrong. But I changed them. You don't want to go back and change all your answers. It took me two and a half hours for the test. It typically takes people 40 minutes, 45 minutes or less. But I took my time. I marked questions. I looked at the questions over. I went back and checked it again. Went all through 60 questions again. Went all through 60 questions again just to make sure I marked everything right. And sure enough, I found a couple of uh, answers in the questions, um, which was nice because that could have made, again, that th those two questions could have made you pass. You never, you never know. So, but study, you don't have to worry about and get stressed out. I, 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 you know, I did and I tried to practice what I preach, but I'm a bad test taker. So I, I you know, it's, it's not as bad as you think, but it is a hard test. You need to do a ground school. You need to do a uh, shepherd error if you want to do shepherd. Shepherd error is a good thing to review, to get now, now that you understand what the questions mean and how to work through them and how to get your answer on the figures and the charts that they give you, they provide for you is now you can just get the questions and understand the question, get the right answer, memorize, uh, because let's face it, you pass this test, you're going to get majority of your experience in the air, uh, not on the ground. And we all, and you know, the FAA understands that, just like the private test. You get majority of your experience in the air. Um, let's face it, we do all of our uh, you know, um, our check rides when it's nice outside, very early winds. So it's when you experience uh, flying is when you do it yourself and fly in different categories and fly in different weather and fly in different winds. Um, so they didn't understand that. But you also have to understand what things mean in the charts and what the FA wants you to understand it when it comes to um, air speeds, uh, holding patterns are a big one. You know, you go mist. What's the holding pattern? You're going to enter the holding pattern. You got parallel, you got direct, you have a teardrop um, type entry. You need to know all that stuff. And that's a couple of formulas that you would get. If you have a C, um, it's a C, C I had a C2 calculator, uh, but there's a C3 calculator out there that would actually calculate your entries for you in a hold. 
So I recommend that because I had a couple questions on the test. And thank God for me, on the um, um, American Flyers ground schooling, that Sunday we went over that questions and I actually remembered, okay, that's the formula. And before I took the written test, I understood a couple of the formulas that I need to know uh, for the written uh, to do some math questions. And I only got one of those questions, believe it or not, and two and two um, holding pattern questions, which I think I passed those three questions. So those are things you need to understand and know. And 99% of the time when you're flying IFR, um, ATC is going to tell you what to do anyway. So you're not flying exactly what the chart's going to say. You need to know what the chart means. And at the airport you're landing at, you need to understand the, the, uh, the mist. You need to understand the um, pattern altitudes. You need to understand their airways. But, the, but ATC is going to... Uh, vector you 90% of the time, 99% of the time, and tell you what to do anyway. Um, so at, those are the things you'll learn once you get up in the air. So that's where I've been. Uh, and the other questions I'm going to answer here I have for you, I've been getting some, some emails, not a lot, but I think I got like five or six emails right now about the flying we had last year. So uh, the date is going to be June 12th. It's a Saturday. And then June 13th will be the rain date. So put it in your calendar for that weekend to be available. And what I'm trying to put together with some of the sponsors is whoever flies the furthest uh, will get a prize. I'm working on that right now. I'm working on trying to get the National Guard. I'm trying to work on, on trying to get a couple things going on. We're going to have a live band. We're going to have uh, food, obviously, ice cream, and, and, and stuff of that nature. Again, hopefully it'll be a little bit more better because of... Um, Hopefully by June, COVID kind of slows down a little bit and we could have a little more fun. But we had a lot of fun last time. Bring your own chair like last time. Um, and you can go on the website at pilotfun101.com. Uh, you can sign up through there. You go on the event tab on the top right corner. Um, you can email me on a couple of the events there. Um, I have other people helping me put this together. And we're trying to make this very organized. There's no accidents. There's no wing hitting and stuff like that. We're going to have, I think I'm up to eight volunteers. Uh, we did a really good job last time, and I'm happy my guys, the guys all helped out. It was, it was great to do that. So uh, June 12th, June 13th is a rain day, 11 to 3. Um, or is it 11 to 2? Um, I think it's 11 to 3. <laughs> Whatever, whatever we all leave, right? Uh, but it's going to be a great time. So bring your family, bring friends, bring whoever you want to bring. And it's, it also applies to the public. Anybody from the public, I got a lot of viewers uh, on the public side that watch me from Montgomery, uh, Newburgh. Uh, yes, like last time, bring the family, friends. It's not no charge at all. It's be a fun time. So June 12th, June 13th. And also, if you're looking for some hats, um, I finally got hats back in stock. I, I put these hats... I got these little beanies with the, with the Pilot Fund 101 um, uh, patch, as you can see. And I got this hat as well, green, green olive green. And uh, if you'd like to have some of these um, stuff, go on the website again. Um, go, go under uh, merch. You'll see that on the main screen there in shop. And then you can see what I have on the page for all the merch stuff. So uh, people have been asking me over the last year about buying a couple of things. Like, you know what, let me invest in some stuff so people can go on there and check it out. And if it's over $100, folks, it's free shipping right now. So uh, so these go pretty quick. And they're expensive for me to buy because I, I, you know, I can't buy you know thousands at a time where the price is a little bit cheaper. So they're expensive. I think I make like a buck and change off them. Um, I can't afford to do free shipping, or I would. Um, just to break even so you guys get this out there for you um, But it also supports the channel supports you know the camera breaks to get it fixed or buy a new camera and stuff like that um, it, it supports the editing programs that I use and so on and so forth So want some merch folks pilotfunder101.com and go to shop and you'll see what I have on the page there I got mugs. I got all kinds of cool stuff uh, So maybe when I get really big my, when I hit like 4,000 subscribers I can get like more hats and I can get them cheaper <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. So, folks, any questions, email me, pilotfunder101.com. Remember, the fly-in, June 12th, rain date, June 13th. Go to the website, pilotfunder101.com, and res res you know, reserve your spot. It's, again, a limited spots available. 
um, and let's get have a good time with that. And email me at pilotfun101.com, uh, pilotfun101 at gmail.com. Any questions you have on the written? I just took the written test last weekend, so I just took it. Um, it's fresh in my mind. Any questions that you guys have, email me. We'll exchange phone numbers. I'll give you a call. We can go over some stuff that was on the test. It's fresh in my mind. Remember, I believe it's 600 and change or 1100 and change. I forgot which one that the FAA pulled 60 questions from. So um, you could be lucky and not get a hard question. You might get like 10 questions. My first seven questions. My first seven questions were figure questions. Typically, the figure questions are the harder questions. So, but yeah, pilotfun one at gmail.com. We'll talk about it. Uh, no problem at all. And if you like what I'm doing, folks, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. We're at 37, almost 3,700 um, subscribers. Facebook, I got 22,000 followers on Facebook. I don't know how that happened. Facebook's doing better than um, the, the channel here. But we'll get up there. And uh, Instagram. And check out the website. It's a pretty cool website. I got videos on there. I got things I'm doing on there. Um, pilotfun101.com. Until next, folks. Until next time, folks. Fly safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys soon in the air.